kind of early days of the internet, if anyone could design any kind of web page, <laughs> yeah. they got a call from someone saying, can you yeah. do, do that for me? So our target 100K and we got 340K total, I think over the course of the 30 days. Just a little bit further than your kind of limits to kind of get those jobs because if you've never done it before you've always got to kind of yeah. go one step to get the job putting yourself forward for stuff and kind of having the confidence that you can welcome jim Thank thanks you. for joining us in our victoria studios pleasure yeah really pleased to have you here of course this is secrets of scale where we like to talk about how to either scale up products or services or careers you know when we talk about paths you know you you went into a house of fraser obviously a path you made the decision to go freelance um you know these are key decisions and, and i i guess the decision to go down this road of developing a, a robotic drawing board stroke machine definitely took you down a path so it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it was a specific kind of thought behind that or i mean f for yourself uh, t a decision uh, to do that you know was was there yeah. anything in particular well yeah i guess it's kind of like you have an energy for you know trying to kind of put yourself out there at some point because if you just do client work all the time you kind of you know it can get you down uh and i think if you're kind of a creative person you need to kind of you need these outlets and i think i just had quite a few ideas i mean it's like i just had a, a back catalogue of stuff that was like you know one day i could do something like this or right uh, and that's kind of what i put in front of barney and kind of gave him five things and just said any of these do you think you know could be doable picked the, the drawing machine which actually came from kind of house of fraser days of kind of like how do you how could you make the window interactive yeah and i came up well if you could have a plotter stuck on a window wouldn't that be cool because it could keep the space alive at night with the lights on because there's often you know lights are left on in shop windows but it's quite right. a dead kind of environment so obviously your previous experience uh house of fraser essentially gave you a, certainly a basis or a foundation for for a problem to solve uh yeah, yeah. For, initially yeah. yeah no i get yeah. yeah problem nice to have but like yeah i think it was that's definitely where the idea came from and that was a crossover mm. from my kind of yeah graphic and slightly technical background and then it was kind of like well i wouldn't even know how to make that but i had made some odd prototypes by taking apart a scanner trying to work out how that worked control it with an arduino you know and then putting that on a wooden board and trying to get it vertical and then realizing things were a bit heavy and it wouldn't work that well yeah. so it kind of had some initial kind of dabblings and then it's like okay well how could we actually do this so, yeah was that a particular strategy that you had you know the, the social media and stuff like this or how are you thinking about growing the business now that you kind of got this this kind of initial product market fit uh i guess in the early stages we weren't really thinking of doing it as a, just the one machine as a business we were seeing that as a kind of almost kind of an advert for what we could do as a yeah. as a studio and i think just because it kind of grew uh, quite rapidly organically there was a kind of like moment of like oh maybe okay there's something more in this than just the one off yeah i guess there wasn't necessarily a, a growth plan at that point okay so so what was it called jotto at this time or what no, was it called, called it's called woodpecker oh yes how oh, i forget that yes woodpecker yeah, of course the, the yes oh, i can't believe i forgot that yes of course it was called woodpecker y you were kind of using it as a an advertisement to show uh, capabilities of, of doing this kind of connected technology stroke robotic mechatronic type you know yeah. connection yeah exactly okay and then actually what happened was due to the fact that it was actually quite let's say social media friendly yeah and, and advertising and friendly and advertising it, it, it actually it almost got its own momentum yeah it, it took on a life of its own it took on a life of its yeah, own yeah. so woodpecker grew that you just you couldn't really ignore it exactly. basically yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah it was never really the plan it was just kind of there was yeah. just moments along the way where it's kind of like okay there's something in this that we hadn't even considered was there a moment when you thought oh hang on a minute i, I think we might be onto something here yeah there's quite a few <laughs> to be honest like i was still in m s windows uh with like a whole crowd of people watching it it's kind of like yeah know, that was kind of like, okay this is quite something and this must have been like in oxford street or something yeah exactly yeah, yeah oxford street yeah people just kind of stopping in the street more effective than all the tv screens and stuff in the other Mental. shops and it's kind of like okay this is actually more uh you were accepted into the CRO. what were forefront in your mind that you were thinking about uh i think at that point it was about kind of raising investment to make a big 
leap. So I think for us, there was this focus on, on kind of like, okay, well, let's get the form factor together that's believable, that looks like, feels like prototype. Let's hone the pitch deck. Yeah, raise some some funding. Through that process, the kind of the business plan was to kind of aim for Kickstarter as a deadline with the CRL's help, kind of go to China, get a kind of an actual quotation and a, a functioning prototype in a manufacturing environment. And then, yeah, kind of prepare for a Kickstarter project. How did you define that whole funding process and, and experience and why why did you go down the Kickstarter or, or crowdfunding route? So I think for our a product that requires its own content, uh, and obviously the vision for it was a was a platform to support, you know, Jotto. The, the community element was really important for us because it was about kind of users regularly using it, sharing content, um, rather than us having to produce that content all the time. Kind of recognised that Kickstarter had a strong community. It was like obviously an ideal kind of match for that, that kind of technology. Um, very much our kind of early adopters market. Really wanted to kind of drive the community element in order to get that kind of platform up and running from day one. Otherwise, it was going to be a bit of a empty disco was our kind of, yeah. Okay. To be able to create a community prior to launching a, a crowdfunding campaign so that, yeah, people were, were following you prior to launch. Talk to me about the whole crowdfunding Kickstarter experience. Uh, how did you prepare and how did it go compared to what you thought it was going to be like? What was the actual reality? So we, we decided it was going to take us kind of about six months to prepare. We really wanted to get kind of accurate costings uh, on the product yeah we felt that was really important and also obviously kind of footage to prove that we're genuine sometimes people can do a, a campaign a lot quicker depending on kind of what what they're trying to do with the product but for us it was definitely kind of give us enough time to get the main kind of pieces in place and then also like i say kind of build this community so that was about kind of building our mailing list with our emails and just getting people to sign up for news about Jotto and creating kind of content on social to really build that build that following so that we can convert on day one what you're talking about is is really important because we see a lot of entrepreneurs or product developers coming coming to us at intratech with what may be a great idea and what is maybe a fully working prototype but of course it has no design for manufacture or assembly right. And they may even launch Kickstarter off of that. They may even raise money off of that. And then reality kind of hits or bites. Right. And in fact, the money they raised, which I think is fantastic, doesn't even kind of touch the sides. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think the, the very fact that you taken that into consideration, looked at basically getting it quoted from potentially a, a final manufacturer yep. or a contract manufacturer good thing to do based on our experience as well you combined the that with obviously with, with the community building so leading up to the launch kickstarter launch how was that uh, yeah pretty manic <laughs> uh, obviously you had to like make videos and you have to get yeah trademark stuff um, get your prototypes working when they're being filmed and you know you're under pressure build your community yeah it's kind of all go basically just tell me about the launch and over what period and uh, yeah what, what, yeah, what so was the results uh, we ran a 30 day campaign uh, we were funded on day three I think we set our total quite high. I know some people set, set it low to get the fastest funded Kickstarter ever sort of thing. Um, but I think we felt that we were quite a grassroots project. We'd had some initial investment to get us the Kickstarter, but actually we did need to get the money in order to manufacture. So we were actually quite transparent about that. And we set our target 100K and we got 340K total, I think over the course of the 30 days. Really impressive. I think you really got those those key elements, right, and, and you did the work. I mean, obviously, you delivered Giotto, fantastic product. I've got one myself, it's in my house. That's definitely a success for you to go through that, that whole process, literally from an idea, you know, all the way through to delivering a product people wanted to put in, into their homes. So, um, you know, especially to take from, from an idea concept right way through to a commercialized product. Yeah, you know, uh, at scale, which is what you did. Many, many people try and, and fail. You were one of the ones that were able to do that. So why you? What about you uh, enabled that to happen? Uh, good question. I think the, the product was definitely a kind of a combination of all of our skills, which I think really helped. So when, for instance, product design agencies came back with solutions that weren't right, it took us a little while, but I think it was, it was about having the confidence to actually be able to do stuff ourselves. Um, and that allowed us to get it over the line. So I think that was, yeah, 
one major thing. And then I guess, yeah, tenacity, basically. Just no no question that we weren't going to get it across the line. Yeah, final, final question, which we always end with. I wish someone had, had told me. Uh, if you think back and uh, what would you had wished someone had told you that would have the, the biggest impact on what you've achieved? Uh, I think probably the one thing is, yeah, kind of more about kind of trusting your gut. I know people kind of go go with your gut instinct, take a risk. Kind of going through the arc is like, if we're going to do this, we need experts we need, and we need advice. And obviously you do. But there were definitely points where we didn't say, stop, that's not right for us. And I think if you're going to put the time into this product and you're in a good place to get it made, you're going to know a lot about it that people haven't even thought about. And you've given it a lot of thought. I think you've just got to have the confidence at the points where it doesn't feel quite right to say kind of no actually this is not right for me I'm going over here um, and yeah, again take those risks yeah yeah thanks Jim uh, I, I think it's been really great uh, talking to you obviously listening to you I've known you for, for obviously for a number of years and the great thing about you is um, obviously you're technical you're, you're creative and you know you're, you're able to, to balance that creativity with actual with actual delivery you know whether that's the the hardware or software or, or whatever and also appreciate your openness honesty in sharing your journey with with everyone so yeah again thanks for your time really appreciate pleasure. it thanks so much and yeah, it's been a pleasure great thank you cheers, cheers. all right cheers, cheers. all right let's go nice. to the pub yeah <laughs> <laughs>